Hi everyone. Hi everyone, it's Erkan Ali here with Jill Tiny and our special, extra special guest, Darren Shalipur. Welcome you. to JOP. It's only been a year and a bit. What have you been waiting for? Um, don't know, really. <laughs> <laughs> I'm really just waiting for the guilt edge <laughs> invitation. Yeah, yeah. I yeah, say, yeah, 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 I say that to everyone. It's like, <laughs> they go, oh, well, you didn't invite me. Yeah. What's going on? Like, they shouldn't wait for invitations. You should no. be banging down the door. Yeah, yeah. You yeah. need yeah. to talk. Yeah, I mean, in, in, um, so for, for our audience, I mean, one of the things we do is we kind of, before the, the session, we just get ourselves kind of in the mode. We kind mm-hmm. of create the the, uh, the podcast and get ourselves in. Yeah. So for me, you have been a part of my life since before I met Jill. Uh-oh. That sounds like BC. <laughs> BG. <laughs> no, but seriously, it's been, you've been part of, um, we've been part of each other's lives yeah. for over a decade. Mm-hmm. And we're still talking, which is quite a testimony. <laughs> <laughs> we still get on. You've yourself, yeah. haven't you? <laughs> like, well, I haven't got rid of you yet, yeah. So I just want to, I mean, you know, that, that, that for me is a world away. Because that's mm. all B, pre-B collaboration. Mm. Mm. Very different Alan's the accountants, which we're going to get into. So first of all, I really welcome you. And how, do you feel you. Like, how does it feel to be on the uh, podcast? Yeah, it's a bit really, surreal, isn't it? Really excited. Because they three of us are the camera, <laughs> <laughs> the lights. But <laughs> but yeah, you know. So you're you're you've, we've done um, interviews before. We've yeah. done a few now. Oh, yeah. yeah. You know, yeah. you, you just see all on YouTube if you want to go and have yeah, a look. Yeah, look up and look find on YouTube. Shall I let you speak now? Yeah. Um, <laughs> no, I think. Look, um, at the end of the day, I think um, when you become passionate about something and the, the, the certain things I've got to say um, today, I think it's, it's important to have a voice, mm. um, you know, and it's not, it's, not, it's not easy when you run a business to be running a business and um, not know other people who are similarly like-minded. Um, and I think what you've um, created through be be collaboration is a group of people that are like-minded mm. um, you know we all have the same issues about running our businesses about um, you know the joys of businesses the sorrows <laughs> yeah, you know so the, the, you know it's a balance isn't it um, and um, it's it's a really nice place to be where you feel that you're understood by 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 other people and we're all from different disciplines that's the yeah. amazing thing yeah that that you know, I think is um, skill sets are you know left and right the left brains right brains that we we we're, we're a totally different mix thank really goodness different. a bit like the world really isn't it so yeah, it is exactly. a real uh, cultural um evolution that we've yes. got going on yes question yeah do you remember the first B collaboration meeting that you attended um, yes, I think it was in Hartford in, um, I don't know exactly where it was, but it was in, um, Loch Fine. Oh, was it Loch Fine by then? I think so. What, what about the Pishabri House one? Did you come to that one? No. Well, actually, I'd go, I'd, I'd go back even further, because I, th- I think quite possibly, I, there's two places I remember first starting talking about this B collaboration mm-hmm. idea before it was called B collaboration. Mm-hmm. One was with you and Nar- uh, with you and Dimmick, mm-hmm. and the other one was in the business club I used to run, mm. starting to mm. put it before before I met you. Right. And it was to do with at the beginning it was like amalgamating left and right brain mm. thinkers, you mm. know, like the accountants and the coaches, you mm. know, very different worlds, creative, mm. right mm. brain, art driven, yeah. to technical kind of. But but even if we go before that, can mm. we re- can we rewind right back? <laughs> what was life like? Um, how did how did you, you know you ended up in accountancy? Mm-hmm. And by your own admission, you'd rather have been a mechanic or some kind of car related. Something to do with cars. Because I yeah. do cars. Yeah. Oh, well, that's the connection. <laughs> yeah. I just it. Okay, yeah. get yeah. it now. Brilliant. Cause, cause, cause. <laughs> I didn't know that about you. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, um, you know, growing up as a... And I'm, and I'm, I'm really going to have to be racist now. I'm, right. I'm just saying, so I'm, not gonna, I'm not racist. Yeah. But, but you gonna, are. But it's like, the, the, uh, for me, a lot of my experience with Indian background people they kind of end up in the academics they end up yeah. in with a yeah. certain yeah Beju says it himself no, but Beju says it does it you either end up chemist, a doctor pharmacist and the yeah. chemist is the low of the low but you know, <laughs> it's kind of, you know so, so it, it really you know, chemist is retail I suppose yeah. but it, there's this pull towards professions that in my culture that's not quite it's more yeah. it's yeah. more entrepreneurial more business mm. you run businesses mm. and then you have accountants and lawyers well, like the Jewish community, <laughs> I suppose isn't it, it just, yeah yeah yeah, yeah. So was it was it a, was it coming down from your parents or was it 
Um, how, did, how did you think it came about? You know what? I yeah. fell into accountancy. Did I, d- I didn't even. Um, Were you it, good at maths? You know, I was at 19. No, no. Uh, that's <laughs> the biggest Still not mis- good at maths. <laughs> yeah. The biggest misconception is you need to be good at maths. I think you need to enjoy figures, which is a different, yeah. different thing, but you don't need to be good at maths. Um, but I kind of fell into it because I was 19, didn't really know what I wanted to do. Um, and a friend of my dad's just said, look, there's a, there's a job going as a, as a clerk at this, oh, wow. this firm on Baker Street or wherever it was. And, uh, do you want to give it a go? Yeah. And obviously when you've got nothing else to do, you're like, oh, um, you, you know, let's, let's give it a go. And I remember my dad asking me within about, um, a month of starting, you know, do you really enjoy it or are you just... He saying that and I actually said no I really oh, enjoy yeah, it yeah. you know I really enjoy um, I don't know what it was I think you know I think uh, definitely personalities are set quite early in your life and um, it, the, the, the sort of structure the methodicalness the, um, the the way you do the work um, you know I felt was was Com- something that complemented mm-hmm. yeah complemented uh, the way I thought um, you know so if you um, hadn't been an accountant, what, do you, can you ooh, see where you would have ended no up? No idea, no idea. Um, it was but, a happy accident then? Yeah, mm, yeah. Meant to yeah, be. I think so. And then, and then once you're in, you know, then I thought, okay, I want to give this a real go. Mm. And then I left the job, went back to studying, finished my studies, and then and then took off from there. But I want, I want to go because we recently got together to help you to get started on your article for the Quest. Mm. So the Quest mm. uh, for our audience is uh, is the online publication that B Collaboration produces. The collaborators, it's a collaborator's own driven project. They they've come together and and different collaborators contribute every month. And I think we're on our seventh mm-hmm. seventh. Um, yeah. Uh, issue, um, and you you've come in and write an article about collaboration in business, and mm-hmm. and, and I think we, we sat down and started writing the article, yeah. and you start to share your journey yeah. Yeah. from coming from Africa uh, yeah. to yeah. England in the seventies yeah. and what it was like, That's and then yeah. type. So what did I say? Did you in Africa, <laughs> India, India. <laughs> said Africa. They all look the same to me. You know, <laughs> I think I came from Kenya. Did no, you get that from? Uh, you know, one continent. Anyway, so, so, but you, you talk about your journey when you arrived in England as a yeah. kid and then starting in the education system. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, can you share a bit about what that journey was like in the early days? Yeah, I mean, it, you know, obviously, um, I think I think the seventies were very different. Yeah. Um, you know, in in the past, and um, it it was quite challenging because I was um, perhaps one of two Indians in a school of sort of five hundred oh, or. Wow whatever it was, um, and, and it was difficult, you know, I was just grasping the language, new environment, but the, the, the main thing i found since then, and it's always easier to look back, mm. is that um, you look for a sense of belonging, um, and so you want to fit in as much as possible, you, wanna be, you don't want to be singled out, you want to be like everyone else. Um, and, and the journey that's happened now, is, and it's so ironic, is mm. that I now look for areas to actually stand out, yeah. you know, and, and as we all do in business, because to have a voice in business, you need to stand out, you need to be something different, mm. you know, whether you're loved or hated, um, at least you know you're, you're the tribe that are going to follow you. Um, and so it's, it's, it's just ironic, you know, mm. from coming from a place where I really wanted to fit in, I'm now always trying not to fit in. Yeah. Yeah. I don't look at myself as a standard accountant. I don't. Yeah. I don't. I always speak as accountants in the third sense. Uh, They're over there, and then yeah, there's that exactly. Here, yeah. Um, because you know, I think that that drives empathy with my clients because they actually have seen very standard accountants in the but way even, they do. Even your language is, is radical because yeah, you, you just yeah. said drive empathy with my clients. You know, yeah, it's like, you know, yeah. and I, I can't imagine you'd have used that kind of language 10 years earlier. No, no It would have been, been about no the numbers, it would have been about the compliance, correct, it would have been about correct. the technical work, the yeah, transactional. It's just transactional, yeah, yeah. you know, and now it's about really getting to know the people you work for. So, so... Just to, to highlight the journey, because that's really what mm. I kind of, and, and I, I guess we're standing in authenticity, especially mm. in the journey of possibility, because, you know, that's the journey, it's the journey. Mm. It, pre-us meeting, what were, you can dip with your partners, mm. and you're running your practice down in service, and what mm. are the kind of things were you, were you, pre, you know, I wouldn't say pre but what was occupying your time, what were you doing? Um, well, I think, you know, you're, you're just looking for a better mousetrap and you're, you're sort of, um, you know, going along, doing the do, you know, churning out the widgets, 
uh, but not really getting a sense of achievement, you know, because yes, you're earning a, a decent amount or you're, you're, you're earning your crust, but you, you know, you've got to enjoy what you do. We spend so much time in our working lives. Um, and when I hear stories of people that are going to work and not enjoying their work, yeah, you know, right. and, and a lot of it is the media, you know, you look yeah. at the media and they'll say, oh, it's Friday, you know, mm. the weekend's coming. Well, why does it need to be Friday? You know, you should be enjoying the whole week. Yeah. Um, there's there's a lot of that sort of stuff. And, um, you know, and, and that's what we were doing. You know, we, we were doing a great job, but we weren't really being fulfilled. Mm. Um, in the, And we could tell that because clients were, as you said, just treating it as, as transactional. Mm. And, so and, how yeah. long have you been an accountant now? Um, so I... Um, started when I was 19, so quite a few that years. Yeah. 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 So, <laughs> quite a few years. So, originally, I mean, even 10 years uh, and, and beyond, um, accountants didn't have to work at getting clients, did they? Yeah. Because you had yeah. your certificate on your wall, and yeah. it's like, oh, well, he's qualified, I'll go to him. Exactly. High Street, exactly. had a shop, people would walk yeah. in, yeah. And, and then all of a sudden, I mean, in my field of uh, understanding networking, mm. it's mm. the accountants and solicitors who've never had to try very hard, yeah. find it really yeah. hard to actually connect with people yeah. in order yeah. to, to get the business, because yeah. before they didn't have to get the business, the business Correct. just walked through Correct. the door. Correct. So there's been this whole shift in my Set yeah. around who you are, yeah. what accountants deliver. Yeah, but sure. from your perspective, you were going down the route of this is what everyone does, this is what I'm going to do. Yeah. And then you came across a, a business coach and who's gone, have you thought about it this way? And you're yeah. like, whoa, yeah. because that resonated with you, yeah. didn't it? Well, more than coming across a uh, can, I think it was, I, I think the way we met was we, um, we mentioned it to a client um, about our you know, frustrations and, and uh, in terms of um, sort of enjoying the business and so on. Mm. And that's when he mentioned, look, just meet my coach. I think he'll introduce a new way of looking at things with you. Mm. Um, and that was interesting because, you know, we, di we didn't actually know what a business coach did until we started working with account. So um, a lot of people don't actually, and you're not yeah. the wise about. <laughs> yeah. 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 But, but but it was interesting. Yeah. You know, it took it took an intervention, doesn't it? Yeah. You know, and I think again, this is about highlighting the journey. Yeah. People are telling us stuff all the time. Oh, you know, you should try that. Or you should look at this. Mm. Or you should read. I, I find that people send me stuff. Have a look at this. Have yeah. a read of that. Yeah. And you're like, I mean, maybe not so much. Maybe ten years ago. Yeah. But at some point, someone's going to nudge you in a certain direction. But you took up the opportunity to find out more. Mm. But you, you, it wasn't like your client said, "Hey, you should meet our coach, mm. Erkan, Blah blah blah. Because you didn't just go, "Great, what's his number? Let me Correct. speak to him." Correct. It, 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 he actually had to be a bit more, yeah, kind yeah, of um, direct with you about definitely. it. Definitely. And and you know these things, um, you know, it's very, it's much more easier with hindsight, isn't yeah, it? When sure. you when you have the journey to look back on, and I think um, at the time. Um, we couldn't see a way out and I think a lot of business owners are in that they 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 can't see a way out because they've just got to continue with what they have mm. and change is really difficult you know mm. to change what you have to change your core business to say right we'll now uh, do it a slightly different way mm. um, is really Scary. difficult and big companies mm. have been through that you know Kodak and all these companies which um, so which they could have gone yeah. digital. Yeah. They knew about digital, but that yet yeah, they said we make too, too much from um, you know producing yeah. film that people buy. It would be interesting in yeah. today's day and age what House of Fraser are going to do now. Mm. Yeah, because yeah. they are letting go their Oxford Street store, yeah. all the big yeah. flagship stuff, and they have a massive opportunity mm. now to be a British brand. Yes, and, uh, like yes. Burberry. Um, reinvented itself yeah they can do that yeah. as well and I, I imagine and hopefully they're doing this that they're going to use the likes of Cambridge or Oxford or Winchester all the beautiful yeah. cities in the country yeah. to have a small intimate yeah. beautifully yeah. organized structured department store that people yeah. are going to reminisce and go oh it's just like England in the old days but with wonderful customer service yeah. and an ability yeah. to source things that people are interested in and it's just it, it makes your heart sink when you go, oh, great British institution, they're going to shut mm. all their big shops. Mm. You're like, wow. But actually, mm. we need to be evolving, don't we? We need yeah, to kind definitely. of, if you're not move, moving forward, you're moving back. Yeah, you? and evolving, you know, doesn't necessarily mean something that's new because we spoke about this the other day that, um, you know, um, a lot of the 
interpersonal stuff has gone because we hide behind emails and PCs, yes. you know, and just getting back to phoning people, yeah. something as basic as that, God. is is just so um, empowering. And, 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 you know, clients or, or your business customers want to hear from you. Yeah. Yeah. But you're always. Well, it's interesting you say that. I met someone. Emails. I met someone a, a few weeks ago, and he gave me his card, and he just had his phone number, his name on it. I said, "Oh, you got an email?" He goes, "I don't want your email. Phone me." Yeah. He said, "Phone yeah. me. I don't want to. I want to speak to you." Yeah. And yeah. I thought, how refreshing, you know, how refreshing to have someone yeah. that says, "Now, phone him twice. He hasn't returned my calls." But, <laughs> but, but we did. But we did have a lengthy conversation. But the interesting thing was, it's it's a great filter for who you want to speak to and who you don't want to. Yeah. Why, why give him your email? Well, if, I think there's there's um, the space for both. <laughs> Yeah. It's at because point. at the end of the day, a lot of people just choose email because it's quick and easy and they think they're getting something out of yeah. the way. But actually, it's quicker to do that to get an answer and then you can carry on. Yes. And it's choosing the right format for you. Yes. Like, I notice you often do three or four emails. Like, blah, 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 and I just put the phone up. It's so yeah. much quicker and you get an answer straight away. Yeah. Because people, yeah. that's their first go-to. Yeah. They just do that straight away or they'll text. And it's yeah. like, if yeah. it's about an arrangement, pick up the phone and say, yeah. I'll be there at two. Done. That's it. Yeah, I think the other thing that I, I again, is, I think it's a balance. I mean, sometimes I'll, I'll, I'll arrange a meeting with someone. It takes mm. half a day. I think, what the hell am I doing that for? Mm. And I could have had half an hour Skype call done. And it's mm. moved forward. And it's kind of mm. breaking down. So it's like breaking in and out of the illusion of digital. Yes. And yes. real time. You know, like you know, real geographical life. And mm. don't get sucked everything, in everywhere. to what everyone thinks you should be doing. Yeah. yeah. Work out what's yeah. effective for yourself. And and also we spoke about this the other day with, with my team. You know. Um, Rapport building mm. is about speaking to people. You can't get the same level of rapport building through an email communication. Yeah. Mm. Um, and so picking up the phone has so many advantages beyond just the fact that you know, you're speaking and you're getting a message across. And you, you know, might have to do both. Rapport. Picking the phone up, chatting to somebody, depending on their personality profile, how they communicate, exactly. they want a quick yes, no. Exactly. Now can you send me an email with all that information? Yeah. Okay, and yeah. you have to do the email exactly. anyway. You have to do but that you've that made anyway. the first point of contact and yes. they're expecting your yes. email and then it, it comes, there's yes. that connection. That's yeah. what you're after. Yeah. Exactly. I, I just want to rewind back as well because mm-hmm. one of our early meetings, uh, right. I, I can't recall which one because mm. I'd have to go check the notes. But there was this one when I said to you, so can we talk about I would read really like the term closing business, but mm. taking an order or getting someone's commitment, you know, mm. and everybody wants to get that that commitment, you know, uh, to do something with yeah. somebody, you know, yeah. to make a sale, right? And I remember asking you, so how do you do it at the moment? And you guys used to just send them a quote via an email. Email, yeah. And that was it. And wait for Whoa. a response. Do you remember my response to you? Do you remember what I was like? I was shocked. Yeah. And, and then surprisingly, you were finding it harder and harder to get clients. Yeah. And we changed that, didn't we? It was a very yeah. it was something you was doing, who knows, maybe it was an old practice you did before and that yes. was enough yes. and that's how you do it. You didn't even think about it. But when you told me I was horrified. <laughs> and you know, can you just tell us a bit about how that shifted for you, how how you do things yeah, I mean, and the uh, difference it makes to your results. I, th- I think with hindsight, you know, we if if I'm honest, I think it was a um, um, you know, you're almost uh, expecting the loss by doing it that way. So it was a good excuse to say, well, oh, well. they probably weren't good clients. It's making you or, right. <laughs> yeah, making, making yeah. us right, you know. Yeah. Um, whereas actually facing your fears and dealing one-to-one with someone, I mean, all our all our discussions now are done face-to-face mm-hmm. and, and, and clients either read into us and, and like what they see and that they'll shake hands on it or, or they won't. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's great too, you know, because at least we know we're, we're in a, a long-term relationship. So. Um, so I think that makes a lot of difference, you know, the, 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 the interpersonal stuff and actually meeting people face to face, reading body language um, is, is the way we do it now, which is very different. And the difference to, to the results? Way we do. It's astronomical. I mean, the conversion rates are just, you know, so different mm-hmm. because, um, because, again, it's about feeling that uh, you connect with someone, you know, and I think that's what clients want to do more than anything is that they feel that in order to trust you, they first need to connect with you. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and people so, by people. Yeah, exactly. So, so, uh, so a big collaboration, we talk a lot about the fierce scarcity competition yeah. paradigm. Now we've, yeah. just, we've just identified like, there's many ways you could identify, but we talk yeah. about this fierce scarcity yeah. competition. I've been to um, networking events, you know, and, and the account will get up and they'll mm-hmm. go, if you don't get your return in, and if they don't yeah. do this, and if you don't do that, yeah. they'll go back, they'll take you home, they'll shut your business down, they'll, you'll end up divorced, and your kids yeah. will end up in yeah. care, and you'll end up homeless. And, that, and you kind of sit there as an entrepreneur, and you go, 
But you know, yeah. you, you, they have actually instilled fear, yeah. you know, and I think in uh, some of the marketing messages we put in, you know, uh, for Alan's was, you know, most yeah. accounts you've met are either boring, talk down to you, or try to scare you, yeah. stories about yeah. the HM, you know, about the tax man. Yeah. And, you know, one of the things we talked to, we, 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 you shifted from that world, yeah. didn't you? Yeah. From what we could call the love, connection, abundance world. Yeah, definitely. You and know? and I think that shows when we, when we speak to um, clients because it's, you know, yes, you've got to keep them informed about the dangers in the, in the business, but um, a lot of it is about, you know, what do they want out of the business? Mm. You know, what are they like as people, first and foremost? And what are they feeling of their frustrations and how can we help them with those frustrations? You know, and that's a very different way to overloading them. Because you've got to remember most business owners, or at least the ones we work with, um, are not detailed people, right? So they, they just want to hear, um, you know, in, in, in a few lines what's important to them. Mm. Um, and so if you've got that, that small window to talk to them, it, it's about finding out what their so, life So it's is, like they've got their back. The, the, and, and exactly. Also, but the other exactly. thing is, is also it was the differentiation, and I think this is the case for every business, going from an also-ran, yeah. i.e., you know, compliance, past base. You know, H. I've always said like an outsourced HMRC office, yeah. most accounts. Yeah. And what you what you start to do is actually become an asset for the business. Yeah. You actually yeah. you're like a department within their business that handles yeah. the finances, yeah. whether it's compliance or yeah. forecasting and going forward. Yeah. And now they've got an ally in the business because yeah. you know, yeah. it could be it could be a very lonely place, as we said Definitely. earlier on. And that and that goes back to what I said earlier about not feeling that you were impacting, to now feeling that you really impact because mm -hmm. you know that. You know, to feel that someone says to you, oh, you've, you've been a great asset and you've mm. helped me get where I am, um, or you're my type of accountant, you know, mm. it's, it's, it's really complimentary and humbling. And, uh, and that so will impact nice. your, your, your staff experience, it'll, Correct. It'll, it'll get Correct. referrals and it gives you loyalty. I mean, you can ask for, exactly. for more. Exactly. So um, just rewinding back to those early days, mm -hmm. so this, co this coach turns up, wakes you up a bit, starts giving you, because the other thing I don't think you were doing at the time mm. was reading or doing anything to develop yourself yeah, yeah. now i know you now it's like you get in the car for half an hour and there's something exactly. playing, isn't there exactly so how how you know i think you for me i think that kind of happened around the same time the penny dropped wasn't yeah. it? it was it was yeah definitely because i remember the first thing you asked us to read i think it was brian tracy one of his um psychology of closing um, and and you know it was really interesting there was there was an instance i think i described to you once where i was driving down the motorway and I missed my junction because <laughs> I was so engrossed in the yeah, book. Well and they say you can't yeah. touch your mobile phone nowadays, but actually listening to stuff is just as powerful. Because yes, yeah. yeah. you're totally engrossed. And, um, and and it was just something that got me really emotionally because it was a, a bit where he says it's it's not about high, how, you, uh, how high you bounce, it's about when you're down, the ability to bounce back up and yeah. the resilience you show yeah. And I had tears streaming down my eyes listening Aww. to that because, you know, yeah. that's what happens in a business. There are ups and downs that yeah. you go through every single day, but you have to keep motoring on. Mm. So know. what are you currently into? What's your favourite? Um, well, I, I still listen to a lot of Tony Robbins. Yeah. Um, I love his stuff ever since um, I went to... Um, in, fa in fact, the two events that I've been to that have really transformed, I think, other than obviously having a business coach was Landmark mm. um, and doing the Landmark Forum and um, and, and the Tony Robbins uh, Excuse me, I'd be inspired. Uh, no, but that's a regular thing. Yeah. Right? I mean, as a, as a one-off thing. Well, it's regular for you because I think you've done more business than yeah. anyone else. Yeah. <laughs> um, but, Most people run away you don't see them again. Yeah. <laughs> but, um, but no, I mean, La Landmark, um, you know, I... I think I did in 2011, 2012, I did um, Unleash the Power, which is a Tony Robbins event. Mm. And they was were that both. Where just, you walk over the coals? Yeah, yeah. they're both fantastic in their own ways. You know, one is like small, well, a reasonably small group of people. Of, <laughs> Compared to Tony Robbins, yeah. yeah. And Tony Robbins is like 10,000 people in the room and you're dancing oh, away on a, on a Sunday morning. Yeah. I mean, they put something incredible. in the water, don't they? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> But, you know, these things just, I, th I think that the reading is all about constantly having a hunger to learn. Yeah. I think that's what it is. Do you know the thing? Yeah. I, I still can't, 
I could I can work it out for myself, don't get me wrong, but it still gets me. When you say to someone, hey, you should go do this. Yeah. And they don't. And not only that they don't do it, they also tell you they're not going to do it. Yeah. And I, in fact, one of our, what was, we had a meeting with, uh, with someone the other day, and he said, uh, you invited his sister to the, do the landmark forum. And she said, look, don't talk to me about it again, I'm not going to do it. Mm. And I'm like thinking to myself, but that says more about their relationship than it does about... Maybe. And so but, when someone's but, saying specifically to your face, I'm not going to do it, that's not about what, what they could I, get I, out of it. I, that's, I, that's I, I kind of, connection. yeah, yeah, pro, pro, mate, I don't know. But I'm just to me, it's like, imagine if you'd ignored your client when he said, meet her, okay. Mm. You know, and, and from that point, everything's changed, hasn't mm-hmm. it? Changed. You know, like, it, 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 it started a cascade of... But the thing is now... There's so much. Oh, you should read this. Go and have a look at. Go on that course. Go yeah. on. That. You should talk to this. Whoa! How do you choose? Yeah. Where does it go from there? I mean, we can all do. You know, a lot of people have heard of Tony Robbins. If you've never delved into any personal development or anything like that, is where do you start? You go on Facebook, and it's massive, isn't it? Well, can, well, you know what? I can get that as well. But to be a no, regardless. Yeah, I, that's the thing I, think, I, look, I struggle because we've if, met business owners like that as well. Yeah, we? yeah, and I think if I give advice to anyone, it would be you know start small. Yeah. You know, don't don't go off on a two week retreat or something. Do do the oh, one. Please, that sound good. <laughs> <laughs> do, do, the, do the yeah. one. Do the one day or do the three yeah. day, and and if you enjoy it, then do more of the same. Yeah. yeah. You know, and that and, and that's what stop. it's about because, like you say, there's so much yeah. out there. You can learn um, a lot just from just watching YouTube clips and getting that yeah. information off YouTube. And that's a good start, isn't it? Yeah, it's a good start. If you're, having, if you're stopping for lunch, if you're giving yourself a treat and a break, yeah. YouTube, exactly. just go exactly. to Tony Robbins or Landmark or whatever, exactly. and there'll be a little video, you can sit for 20 minutes, nice break. And exactly, and, the, and and with us, you know, you um, um, you know, we 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 get books off Audible, and we listen to these books, and I've got a massive book list now, and there's always going to be a few that really get you, yeah. um, as opposed to some that you listen to and you think that was great, but but um, there'll be there'll be a few that that are really important. We do um, recommend a lot of um, books, and yes. um, so one of the people yes. that we recommend, Brené Brown. Have you uh, yes. heard any of her stuff? Yes, yes, you know? definitely. And it, it is a, there are people yeah. along the way that just kind of make an impact, don't they? Jill yeah. Bolter Taylor yeah. is the other one that you yes. kind of you go around, and go watch this quick, watch yeah, it next, exactly. only twenty minutes, watch it with me, <laughs> and what do you think? What do you think? You know, kind of you just want to spread that news and, and get it out so yeah. that other people see what you see. But, but I think I think you can't. You, we kind of identify something very important is onward continual development of yeah. yourself and your yeah. people and your Definitely. business. You, I think uh, we, we just, we're working on something called um, Engage Talent, the big collaborations commercial offering. Mm. And we say, you know, running a business today is mm. hyper complicated. You've got to mm. be a finance lead within your business. You've got to have HR support. You need legals. You need mm. health and safety. You need to be, you mitigate mm. your tax and GDPR. If you think and, about it for too long, you and, won't go in, you won't start. You know, the, and, the, and the liabilities to a business owner now, if they get something wrong or there's yeah. an accident, at yeah. work or something you know, yeah. um, and that's not even without the leadership and management and brand that's and right. content that's right. yeah. it's like it, look, take a lie down I get it <laughs> the thing is like, you know so for you um, and this started early on and it's been getting yeah. you know obviously part of the big collaboration um, story yeah. is you've now got a panel of people that you get involved in I mean we've worked on so many businesses together yeah. Yeah. you know um, that have made a big difference to those businesses because you've got a collaborative offering can yeah. you say a bit about how that maybe emerged and how it's become more yeah more I mean uh, I, th- I think you know like I said about being uh, um, uh, having a business it, it can be a lonely experience because mm. when you're a small business and yet clients expect a multifaceted um, um, sort of um, experience with you um, you've got to come up with all of these different things and you can't be a jack of all trades. You know, none of us, to, to be really good at what we do, we've got to specialise in, in our core offering. Um, but I think the ability to recognise the need in clients, that there are other people that could help them, that, that's not necessarily your core offering, mm. is what really then um, gets you that loyalty from the client because you're spotting things that... Um, are not normally the, and, the and it's in the interest of the client and their business, not, exactly. not in the interest exactly. of your own business. So. Yeah. Exactly, you're and not so, just selling another service because exactly. that's what you've got to do. And so, when you have a team of collaborators and you know you can, um, you know, speak to them openly and say, "Look, is this something you could work with me on? Is this is this a client you could help with?" Um, and for me, you know, the the importance of a collaborator as opposed to just a networking group 
is that you've got like-minded people, therefore the relationship that they have with your client will be similar to what you have with the client. So can I just so, decodify that for some... Yes, so, so let's say you went to a normal business networking, yeah. especially where they kind of go, well, you're the only count in the group. Yeah. Not everybody in that group is going to appreciate you as an individual and what you do and how you do it. You know, yeah, there may be a plumber exactly. that you would never recommend. Yeah. You know, so within exactly. big collaboration, you're bringing someone in... Uh, that I suppose there's... That because we don't have any exclusion, yeah. we don't go, oh, you know, come join this group and lock yeah. all the accountants out. We don't use that terminology. Yeah, exactly. What we're saying is there's four other accountants. Why don't you come and meet them? You guys can share knowledge. Yeah. And you all have sweet spots. You exactly. Have, exactly. That's how, uh, in our early journey we we talked about coaches and I don't think I've yeah. met two coaches even if they're both arguing say action coaches right they're still very different very different and how they yeah. deliver and how yeah. they engage and their background experience but you put two coaches in a room and they generally walk past each yes. other yes yes you know where it's big collaboration yeah. and, and, and Jill and I's own story yeah. you're a coach oh yeah well, tell me about how you coach yeah. you, start yeah. yeah. you know you kind of you start to realize how really different your approach is yeah. and what your sweet spot and, and there's something else about um, you know the the collaborative uh, group is that again like I said you know we have a um, common way of looking at things but also this thing we said about learning and you know wanting to learn new things mm. wanting to look at things differently we're all mm. um, you know similarly wired that way which is which is really good so but, it means that's interesting because you say you know, we're similarly wired so you kind of get this impression of all these cows in a field moving in the same way <laughs> That's yeah, yeah. That should be our new show. <laughs> <laughs> but, but actually, we don't all think in the same way, and that's refreshing. Yes. Uh, yes. So everyone kind of comes off at different tangents. We're light-hearted, so we're yeah. all out to make a difference. We're all out to help each other. Yes. But actually, the way we think comes at different tangents, yes. so that we can go, huh, yes. I never thought about that before. That's yeah. really interesting. I didn't see it in yeah, that way. Exactly. Oh, you know, I don't exactly. think you're right. You've got it coached. Totally exactly. wrong. And I love it. I love it when mm. people do that. Exactly. It's like... And, and we were talking about this with Colin Newland last, Colin, as well, <laughs> is we were talking about something and we've got to a bit of an impasse. I said, but we're scared yeah. of coming to, a, coming to a point where we don't agree yeah. in, in the world. In the world now. Yeah, in the and world. I said, well, I want to encourage engagement and real dialogue, not with a view to be right and prove your point, but mm -hmm. to actually share yeah. what, you know, so people can go, you know what, I'm going to have a look at that tonight. You know, mm -hmm. Later on, they'll go, you know what, I'll have a look at that. No, that book he said, but I'll have yeah. a look at that. I was resisting it at the time because it didn't fit my model. Yeah, yeah. And it'd be very easy to be dismissive of that and never look at it. Yeah. But imagine the power of that by, by collaborating those different, those different views. And talk about yeah, models. Yeah. I remember in the beginning when Narish was around at the beginning, people say to us, so what's your business model? And we're like, mm. <laughs> <laughs> What's your target market? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and that frustrated them. You could tell. They we really didn't like different. that. We were talking about it's different. like, oh, you don't know what you're doing. Oh, you're so fit. And it was like we were dismissed yeah. because we didn't have it all yeah. mapped out. And, it did, and we didn't want to. Even and they, we acknowledged that we didn't have it all mapped out. We're supposed to be putting on this front of, yeah, yeah, we've got it worked out. We've got, we've got this big folder of stuff that we've sorted. Yeah. But we're yeah. going, no, we don't no and to me that was refreshing but we were not condemned that's too strong a word yeah. but but people kind of looked down us like i think I if, if, if i was going to articulate now is i think the left brainers would go well that's about a book bs mm. and mm. they didn't get it and therefore they dismissed it yeah. what we're finding now we spent a few you know dec well, not, i've spent a decade converting left brainers <laughs> into uh, heart heart right yeah. brain. you know there is this whole science around you know the brain uh, brain the brain cells. is highly influenced by the heart, yeah. more so than well, the brain cells in the heart. That's yeah. what they're saying. Yeah, yeah. 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 neurology. Yeah. So actually, our consciousness, our intuition, yeah. our sense of what's, and I mean what's right as in just. Mm. You know, like mm. you, you kind of, you know, like you've got this whole breed of order followers, whether it's mm. police or mm. army or people running corporations. Yeah, people yeah. running corporations now doing things every day that they know is actually against yeah. the whole human spirit. Yeah, because whether it's polluting, yeah, yeah. selling people more stuff, you know. Yeah. And, and I was just, I was, I was remissing on, not remissing, I was re, re... In my mind, when you talked earlier, I was thinking, nice. how was the world 10 years ago? Well, Amazon wasn't like it is today. Yeah. eBay wasn't yeah. like it is today. Facebook? You know, and you're saying about, um, you know, like, uh, you know, um, uh, institutional kind of UK-based you know, yeah. traditional shopping services. All right, I believe things should evolve and move mm. on, mm. but I don't, I don't. I don't believe there should just be one massive big accounting firm mm. for the whole world. You know, or one big petrol company That's right. for the whole world. That's right. That whole and and part of what we were about yesterday with uh, mm. Colin about was about this globalization. Mm. Mm. I said, look, I love the, I love the, the, the how technology can reduce drag in mm. operations mm. and and doing things. But mm. what I don't like is the centralized mm. power mm. and the benefit to a few over the millions of yeah. people. 
You know, and and then just to re just drive that home, I'd like mm-hmm. your opinion on it. These eight people, I think, I, I think this is actually old number now. Mm. Own have as much wealth as half the planet. Yeah. Now, yeah. I don't. That's not a club I want to be a member mm. of. Mm. It just doesn't. It just it feels it to me. So can we help business owners? To me, the owner operator business is a completely different animal, mm. and that Definitely. excites me. I like Definitely. the fact that. Mr. Whatever his name is, he's yeah. running his pizza yeah. parlour and the guys over there are tuning cars and the yeah. people over there are cutting yeah. And they start doing... those businesses because that's what they love doing. Yeah, exactly. And that's, yeah. yeah, they're passionate about yeah. that. And, and, you know, you find a lot of businesses that, um, like you say, are passionate about a problem that they see and then they develop that into a real business because they can see that there's a need out there. Mm. You know, and, and we've seen those all the time where um, it, it, it starts small... And and then suddenly flourishes because they're passionate and they're hardworking, and they it hits a time, they're solving it? a problem. When people yeah, are and it also hits a kind time. of um, seeing yeah. that that's what's needed in the world, and then it just takes exactly. off. Like the guy, exactly. uh, what was the name of the company with the shoes? Every time you buy a pair of shoes, they send a pair of shoes. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah, yeah. That's one of your yeah. yeah that so was I was going to say to you, what are your cool. sweet spot clients? But from what you're saying, is they're yeah. passionate about what they do. They're constantly improving it. Mm. They want to make a difference, and it's yeah. to me. Businesses and enterprise is fantastic. I love it, and I and I, and, and I don't think we need to be creating consumption for the sake of yeah. consumption. Yeah. You can eat a pizza a month, or you can go to a restaurant a couple of times a, a month, or you can have a pair of sh- nice shoes, and you yeah. work. You don't need thousands of shoes. You don't need ten cars. Yeah, you know? I mean, that's yeah. the thing I find kind of abhorrent. Yes. Yeah, it, it, uh, it's actually worse. I think it's yeah. doing violence to our planet mm. because the, that that stuff either is using. Um, Peter Joseph talks about externalities, mm. you know, mm. uh, corporate and corporations mm. are actually a small part of business mm. world. They're not, mm. they're, they're a small part of the overall, yeah. Yeah. but they have such yeah. a big influence. But to me, a small business doing something really great in a little area yeah. or region yeah. that people know and trust is fantastic. Mm. Yes. And that's about yes. the humanity, isn't it? Yeah. Because you know, it's yeah, like, sure. do you go to Tesco's or other supermarkets are available yeah. and buy your weekly shop or do you go to the market and chat to the people that know where all your, exactly. your product is? So it's exactly. come from and you just get that lovely yeah, yeah. interaction and you, you kind of go Feeling, yeah, yeah. yeah and they go oh you weren't here last week and you go no no I was, it's just yeah. a nice it's yeah, community exactly. is what it is and that's yeah, the whole yeah. point of big collaboration is having a community yeah. of yes. people that feel in a similar way I do remember going back to the um, damaging the planet as a kid mm. when I found out how bad smoking mm. was for mm. you bearing in mind my parents did it as well mm. so how can you own a mm. company that makes cigarettes it kills its customers yeah it's, it just was so as this kind of revelation of like why would anybody do that <laughs> we, we don't listen to our common sense or as you yeah, say the heart anymore yeah. and your intuition your intuition is so yeah yeah and we, we go back to childhood and you talk to children and I, I love that advert I can't remember I'm, I'm not very good at being advertised <laughs> to because I never remember the product but where there are two children who are very different and they say what's different about you or, or what are you similar to mm. and it's like well, what's your difference in like <laughs> and one's this tall, one, you know, one's different yeah. colour, one's got glasses, and they go, he, he likes Batman and I like Robin, or something yeah. like that. <laughs> you know? yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's, they just don't see it, they don't see the, the huge, Beautiful. they see the blend of what's possible yeah, and not, yeah. what, not the opposite. Yeah. So you, you've been off the scene in B Collaboration mm-hmm. for a little while, although mm-hmm. you're there pre B Collaboration, yeah. and yeah. Um, you know, mm-hmm. life happens, you, you, you know, you've You've uh, recently brought your yeah, partner out. That's right. Know, so yeah. That, these yeah. things take big things. Yeah. But you're back with a vengeance now. I mean, you're yeah. kind of back here on yeah. the JOP. What What are you looking for? What What is it that you, you know, what What are you, you, I don't get that you've done it lightly because you've got nothing else to do. I imagine no, you're no, doing it for your own reasons. And you know, what, what you, how, you know what it is. I think you need to be around uh, like-minded people. I think you know this thing about you become a product of um, the really? five people you associate with. It is very true, and when you're out of the zone, you're out of it, and then everything else stops as well, reading the books, learning, you know, and and I think it's so important to be um, in that community where, where, you know, we've got the challenge, yeah, Yeah, exactly, Um, and, you know, having to stand up, having to um, express yourself, you know, B Collaboration has a lot of these opportunities where people can stand up and, um, you know, with the being, um, you know, no, 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 yeah. no, be known, and 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 um, what some of the others, the genius slot. Genius slot. Yeah. So I remember doing that in uh, in uh, uh, S- where was I? Essex. Yes. Um, so um, so I think you know 
all of that is really interesting to me and getting back into it is, is um, I think, really important. For it's, that it's best practice as well, isn't it? Because we learn how to say, oh, no, I don't want to be at the front of the room. Yes. Oh, no, I'm fine, I'm fine. And yes. then you, you realise that when you do it, actually, one, you get to have your say, and two, you're representing your business and yourself and people get to know you better. So you think, oh, this yeah. is a good thing. Yeah. And then when you come away from that and you don't have the opportunity anymore, that bravado, is that the right word? That, that confidence that you had dissipates as well yeah. it doesn't yeah. stay there forever so the thought yeah. of coming back into it is like actually it is a good thing to be regularly doing this yeah. so that eventually yeah. you don't miss it so it's always there and then when you ask to go to a networking event or somebody rings you yeah. up and says would you yeah. mind as the local accountant in uh, Surbiton telling us about the, speaking at this event you're like yeah, yeah sure yeah. and it's a welcome thing rather than go <gasps> speaking in front of all these people what am I going to yeah. say yeah. so it's it's a wonderful place just to practice and stay on, on top Definitely. of your game yeah. And think about what your game is and think about, if I say this, how's that going to land with yeah. these people yeah. and what do they need, so therefore what am I going to share? Yeah. And it opens other things, you know, like you said, Be Inspired. I mean, I, I love the Be Inspired event um, and I think a lot of our members should should be going to, to Be Inspired because, again, it's just a different way of looking at things, you know, and, and if you're learning and constantly growing, you want to be looking at things mm. um, differently all the time. Yeah, I mean, I was talking so with uh, it's a fantastic event. Uh, Jackie Perkins, one of our again, one of our pre duo right. collaborators right. and members. There is no time before. No, there is no so. time before. Yeah. Uh, it is a blur, to be fair. But she talked about the Ebbing House principle, and the Ebbing House principle, if I'm if I'm right, is like the. So you go to a course, or you'll learn something, and it yeah. will de- it will it will d- decay. Yeah. Because you forget, or you don't. Pre- yes. And one of the things I said, one of the things I said about the, the importance of say some something like big collaboration mm-hmm. or, or or any kind of regular business networking mm-hmm. is mm-hmm. is keeping the practice alive. Yeah. Is getting back in Definitely. and doing it again and doing it again. You know, doing your ten minute. You know, your sort of sixty seconds. Yeah. To me, I think that's fantastic because yeah. it causes you to get up in front of 20, 30, 40 people and re reconfirm what you're like yes. doing your yeah, cry or doing your swimming, you know, exactly. or doing your ten minute run every day. You're you, there's an operative repetition, right? Yeah. Yeah. But also, what I, I said to Jackie yesterday, look, I think that's that is at one level absolutely right. But but this was so clear yesterday in Essex meeting was the social reinforcement mm-hmm. because when you get up and then and, and you're not just presenting. And then going home, you're actually engaging with people and they say, you know that thing you said, this is the difference it made to me. Because people in our meetings, they have their journals, so they're mm. making notes mm. about what you're saying. They're, they're notarising their experience mm. and then feeding it back. Mm. Or um, or someone will, will contribute, so to, you know, you, you do this or you, mm. you know, you've got a twit tick or you, you know, and then you go, oh, do I? You know, or, or, and, and they'll coach and support each mm. other. Mm. So it becomes a self a f- yep. self yep. self um, fueling mm. process. Mm. You can't do that. From a, for a lot of emails Correct. or reading books yeah. or watching videos. So I think, I think when you combine all those things together with, the, with how many different skill sets are, you never mm. know what thing's going to make the difference. Mm. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I mean, um, yesterday, Barry Hager talked about his stroke. Yeah. Mm. You know? And coming back from that, you know that? Tough. Yeah, I mean, and you think, you're sitting there thinking, I was sitting there thinking, what the hell have I... You know, I've got nothing to be that challenged about. Yeah. But you, but everyone's challenge is their own challenge. You know, and I think when you see the courage in other people, you kind of go, you know what? If he can, if he can get through that, yes. or he can do that with I all can that. Do this. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah. I don't know if there wasn't a question in that. <laughs> um, <what>, the other <laughs> thing that, that you've been passionate about since we started, and I, and I, I really really applaud you for this. Applaud. 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 Applaud you for no, mm. is the the commitment to your team because you've. Mm. New, new, you know, for ten years, I'm not saying uh, you know because when I used to, when I come down to the main office, we'd always do an hour or two or an hour and a half yeah. with the team. Now some of them were like, what? <laughs> <laughs> but but last one we hadn't done one for a little while because yeah. we just haven't been yeah. physically at the office while. But it was like you, I really got that your commitment was to help them be the best yeah. to take on some of the learning. You know, tell us a bit more about why it's so important to you. Well, I think you know, I, I again, uh, I think the 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 main uh, role, if you like, of a business owner, um, you know, people are going to come and go. You know, your employees, um, some of them are going to stay longer, some of them are going to stay shorter. Um, and I think um, the, the, the principle that I always hold in mind is um, they should leave as better people than, than they come in, mm. you know, and, and therefore you've done your job 
um, if they come in and you've you've trained them. And I don't just mean training as in Doing the being job. better mm -hmm. at their job. I mean making them more aware. You know, maybe they're reading more, maybe they're learning more, maybe they're open to more learning. Mm. One of the problems with a very traditional career like ours is that um, uh, is that you think that just by learning more of your own craft, that's enough. Mm. You know, and I'm sure a lot of careers are like that, where they think you know to become a better lawyer, better fixing cars, you need to learn more head. law, yeah. right? But you don't. You actually need to be more out there and learning from different people, learning about people, learning the softer skills. Um, and that's not taught. The education system doesn't teach that. No. It's the self-awareness yeah. as well. How are you going to improve as a person if you're not aware of what's going on inside yeah. you and where yeah. all your prejudices yeah. and exactly. views, opinions, emotions come from? Exactly. And, and that, you know, that, that's why I went to Landmark. That's why I went to Tony Robbins, because it teaches you more about what's in here so that you can become a better person for the people that you, mm. you're meant to serve. And so I think my, all my staff came to be inspired once. Yeah, they did. Didn't they? It was the, fantastic. The whole group came and I was so, so happy with that. Um, I think I stood up and said that was the best thing about the day, that yeah. everyone came along. Um, because they didn't need to. It was, it was a Saturday. It was their time. Yeah. You know, and they had enough trust in me, hopefully, and you, um, to say, look, we'll, we'll give this a go. Now, whether it landed or not, I can't, you know, there's only a certain amount you can influence. Well, some of the feedback you know. I had from uh, your team was like, yeah. they, you know, they kind of, one, they saw me in a very different light, and two, they, they, they said, and someone said, well, you yeah. know, I've seen things in myself, I didn't know, yeah. I didn't know, yeah. and I, I'm, I'm understanding the world at a whole new yeah. level. Yeah. And you kind of go, thank you, I've worked on it. But there is the, you know, as an accountant as well, You've been very instrumental in making sure that whatever you've learned through what we've done, you've yeah. wanted your clients. Yeah. You've introduced me to so many clients. Yeah. But they, but they, but also, it's an expense. There's, you yeah. know, it doesn't come. It's not free, yeah. and it is expensive if you're not getting value. But it's almost free. Yeah. If, if in fact it should pay you back. Mm -hmm. um, but there's this thing about you know if you start training your team, what if they what if they leave? Mm -hmm. And you just kind of. Mm -hmm. But I, you know the thing we always said to me was like, what if, what if you don't train them and they stay? Because <laughs> that's what people yeah, in the fear scarcity competition. I'm not going to train you because then you want more definitely. money, mm -hmm. and then you're going to think yeah. you're more confident, and then you're going to leave because then I'm. Like, so I'd rather you were just. You know, so yeah. so is is training something that a lot of your clients are talking about and yeah, um, and I, and I think you know where people miss um, where where I think people uh, miss a big trick there is th is that your team are your company, mm -hmm. and so the more training you put in the team, they will go out and make the clients happy, because it's expected that as a business owner you'd make the client happy, right? You're the mm -hmm. business owner, mm -hmm. but when they get that same experience from the team. And they come to me and say things like, you know, um, Sophie's great or, you know, Christy's great. Um, it, it's, it's really empowering and it, and it helps us feel that we're doing our job properly. I think as well, when you've you know. um, got that kind of uh, emphasis on your team and they then, as a result of that, are enjoying their work. Yeah. What happens is when they're going out socially and they're meeting other people and they're talking yeah. and they're chatting yeah. and then everyone goes, oh, yeah, Sophie really loves her job. And she's talking about it all the time. It's like, so, so what is it you do? Oh, accountancy firm. Oh, actually, my dad's looking for a new accountant. And, and that's, you know, you've got this sales exactly. team going on without exactly. you realising that they are your raving fans because yeah. you are giving them an yeah, amazing exactly. work experience and they wouldn't want to go anywhere yeah. else. Yeah. So you've got no recruitment costs because they love where they are. Yeah. Your sales funnel is always out there because yes. they are just sharing. Yes. And I love the idea, and this is what I say to my clients, is on Friday night, you want to know that your staff are going out for a drink. Oh, thank God it's Friday. Brilliant. But actually, no, because they enjoy it so much anyway. But they're going to be sharing about what I've yeah. done this amazing week. I've had this great time. Yes. I went on this concert. Yes. Be inspired. I'm going to go tomorrow. <laughs> and all of that compounds into making your business Definitely. head and shoulders Definitely. better. And that's why I don't think of it as a cost. I think of it as, as you know, you can think of it as a... Um, uh, it, uh, marketing investment because at the end of the day that is a good investment that can pay dividends because of the longevity in the staff and, mm. the, and the clients mm. and everything else. I just had this thought, I was just thinking over the last 10 years of my engagement with violence is mm. although people come and go, which is again, it's, it's, yeah. it's, it's, it's an, yeah. and clients come and go, yeah. the yeah. thing is there's certain, it's, it's like, although people come and go, mm. the business has a flavour, it has a, it has, I don't, I wanna, I don't yes. want to use the usual cliches like brand, yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> but it has a certain way. Yeah. 
Yeah. You know, the business is in the business. So when the new person comes, they come, one, they're probably attracted to want yeah. to have a job in yeah. a place that has these values. And, but then they start playing their part. Yeah. It's a bit like different actors coming and going from a film set. I don't know, theatre. They all come mm. and go, but the show still goes on. Yeah. And it still yeah. has a certain theme. Yeah. And I think, obviously, as the leader of your business, and um, that's your job to make mm. sure those things mm. are still maintained. Mm. So really, training and developing your people Yes, different people come and go, but the training doesn't go, it stays within the culture of the business. Yeah. Yeah, and, and the other interesting thing, going back to what you said about um, how we pick this up, you know, when I look at, um, you know, my children going through their teenage years, they're never taught any of this. You know, mm. schools don't bring in coaches to make you think differently and to really explore your um, inner self and that. It's all about just training and passing exams and... Um, and then the workplace, you know, are, we, we, we're actually uh, regulated by an accountancy um, institute. You know, they wouldn't bring in a coach to say, look, you know, maybe this can make a You know, how many accountancy firms could look at things differently and expand their businesses from having this different kind of outlook rather than just feeling that the re all the regulators do is, you know, um, come once a year to inspect our books. Again, it's back to that fear paradigm. Yeah, but it's really interesting. Know. What you're saying is actually quite controversial, isn't it? Yeah, you because know, you've, you've just you've just criticised yeah. the education system, the interdrive, but that is what's going on out there. We're, yeah, we're I mean, I'm doing it through personal. You know, I've been through this, yeah. and so I, I I see it personally where everything is about the fear paradigm, and you yeah. know, and then and, and just doing things a, a certain way. You know, I once met. Um, um, once I've met um, a guy at my son's school who was a teacher who quoted um, Ken um, Robinson. Ken Robinson, and he quoted that um, that slideshow he did. You know, and I thought that was awesome. You know, to say uh, I think it, the the title was "Schools Kill Creativity" or something, right? Mm. And he actually showed it to the whole year six or whatever year they were in at the time. You know, that takes some guts. Mm. That takes you to, in when you're in the establishment, to stand out and say, well, actually, there's another way of looking well, at this. There is a lot of, um, you know, you, you hear about, you know, scientists stepping out of the mainstream. Um, um, uh, exactly. Uh, uh, reporters and journalists stepping out of the mainstream. You know, you, you find these people that kind of wake up, or educationalists. A lot of the research I do are people who stepped out of the mainstream and said, you know what? Uh, then they found their voice and they're, and they're saying something very contrary to what the mainstream is saying. Yeah. And I think that takes, I mean, that takes massive courage because generally what I found is people at the mainstream at the top of their careers or in top of these institutions are bought. Mm. They're bought. They've got big, they've got big wages, yeah. big mortgages, probably school fees. There's a certain standing in the community to turn around and go, you know what, this ain't great what we're doing. We're not mm. running our schools or our uh, NHS in the way that's really yeah. benefiting people. Yeah. They're, they're out. They're out. They're they they're, they're, they're dust. To to change it within is a really really. I don't know. I think it's a bit of a oxymoron. I think it's very hard to change it within. Yeah. And I don't know what you do when you're out. You can criticise it. I don't know. But imagine you get in politics and you get high up in politics. Yeah. You just see they they it, it, the, the system doesn't draw for transforming. Mm -hmm. it, it draws for staying the same. I mean, there's something. Um that lot not, uh, not a lot of people may know that the term accountant isn't a regulated term. So anyone can set themselves up and call themselves an accountant, right? And like you said, in the olden days, everything was, your work was just coming to you mm -hmm. because you had to go through a system of training and, and be qualified. And I, I, I often used to say to my ex-business partner, you know, I don't want the regulation of belonging to this um, you know, to, to this uh, membership. In fact, next week you might find I'm not. Um, <laughs> but, but, you well, know, after this, you mean? Yeah, after this. <laughs> but, um, but because, you know, there is a certain thing that says, look, in, I, I get it, in very large firms where the work is highly, highly technical, mm -hmm. um, you know, and you need a certain level of uh, expertise and you, you need to be regulated because you're doing mm -hmm. very complex accounting, it's different. But in a in a small business where it's all about interpersonal skills and understanding your customer, that's far more important than all the stuff to do with the, the, the regulations. Well, let me ask you a question. In, in how many years? 25, whatever yeah. years it is, yeah. you've been an accountant, right? Yeah. Has anyone actually asked you for your credentials Not ever? Right. They don't even know what it stands for. They, they, they either like you and exactly. they feel you're looking after them. Exactly. Or, or they, they don't. don't. 
you know, and, and, and so that, that is really the key. Mm. You know, if I added something different on my business card, it would make, make no effect to a client. But if I phoned them once a week, it would make a massive effect. Yeah. Um, and, and, and that's the difference. Okay. Ch changing uh, ourselves, moving on forward, because we've been going an hour. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah, it's quick, doesn't it? Yeah. Um, so we've got engaged talent coming up. Now, I, yes. I know you've not been hu uh, uh, highly involved in mm -hmm. how it's been involved, mm -hmm. but obviously we started talking about it. Mm -hmm. And obviously that's an evolution of the B collaboration proposition. Yeah. It's taking that talent, yes. nurturing it, building, you know, going back to what you said, like-minded, light-hearted, shared mm -hmm. values, uh, shared uh, higher purpose type people, mm -hmm. and then taking that talent. Mm. It was always about finding people who were doing something they really love, they're really mm. good at it, and they share values and pointing that value at different yes. businesses and organisations. Yes. So what are your kind of what are your thoughts about how engaged talent might evolve? Yeah, I mean it's really interesting because I think um, at the end of the day, you know, you what you've done is um, you've got together various specialisms that, that complement each other. Um, and the way we're able to go in. See what one of the problems I have sometimes is I'll go in and see a uh, a reasonably large client um, and it will be very difficult to service that client on my own you know they'll require lots of different facets of um, of, of touch points that won't necessarily be what I'm offering right now mm. you know um, but and we've done that before we've done that where um, I've gone in and done a proposal and they've said well actually what we want is your business coach <laughs> yeah that's you know, happened with you because you know you, you yeah. seem to be on uh, well maybe I shouldn't see it on camera but they, they they say that I'm so hyped up and so passionate yeah where did you get that from and I, I have to tell them look I'm not on any kind of pill it's, <laughs> that's it's, what you think it's actually yeah. it's actually my business coach so um you know, so, so I see um, the way we're doing this as being a way that uh, businesses can actually get a host of talent in uh, similar disciplines uh, and they can choose, you know, which part of that discipline they which, want. Which is actually you know. saying, do the best thing for that business right now rather than what you've got exactly. to sell. Because we've both got examples. Exactly. I think you've got clients where that I didn't get them but if I referred you in because that was what they wanted the, right time. now. That's what they Definitely. needed. And Definitely. I think there's... Um, there's, a, there's an integrity in that, isn't yeah, there? Because yeah. you're, 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 you're forwarding something in the world that makes a difference, as opposed to just trying to sell and punt yeah, your product. Yeah, which exactly. is a totally different space. Yeah, definitely. Hmm. Anything else you want to add? Miss, Miss Brown, Mr. Jill Tiny. Um, Mrs. Brown. I'm, I'm, I'm Don't call you Mrs. Brown, do we? No. <laughs> Sorry. No. Scrub that. Um, before we started this recording, mm -hmm. you were interested in seeing the French Open. Yeah. And then I found out during this recording that you're into cars as well. Right. So what does Narish do when he's not an accountant? Uh, cars and tennis. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, I love tennis. I mean, it, it, you know, when I'm playing tennis, I just... You know, the, the thing about uh, running a business is, um, uh, especially with, with the, um, the phones and everything we carry around, you know, the ding mm. of the phone, you can never stop thinking for a minute. And mm -hmm. I, I don't think until you start a business, you know what that feels like. Mm -hmm. You know, you, don't, you never switch off. There is no such thing as a nine to five. And the only time I can switch off is when I play tennis. Yeah, really? you have to think I, about what you're doing, yeah. Well, not, not so, I just love it so yeah. much. You know, and Are it, you competitive it just then? allows me. Um, no, actually, I'm more, yeah, I think if you did a, a personality profile on me, I'm more about enjoying Mm. And, and being passionate at what I do than, than necessarily having the win. Mm. Um, you know, especially because I'm, not, I'm never going to be Rafael Nadal, let's face it. So when you're not very good, that's what you uh, say. Yeah. <laughs> that's why I sell that guy on track base. Like, oh, you're a really good driver. Like, no, but I enjoy it. <laughs> uh, no, I really do. I mean, I, I, I just, you know, and, and my son played, so I love playing with him. It's, nice. uh, you know, and how um, old is he now? He's uh, 17. Wow. Yeah, yeah. So. And you've got an, a daughter as well. Isn't and her daughter is uh, twenty-one. Yeah, yeah. She's doing architecture. Very, very right oh. brain. Uh, very, uh, yeah, right brain. Yeah. Sorry. Don't know who she got that from. It wasn't me. <laughs> she's a throwback. So she's a great artist. So. Um, wow. Yeah. So um, yeah, those are the sort of things I love to do. And I think you know when all all said and done, you know I don't mean this to sound. Um, uh, you know anything other than uh, what I'm saying but I, I think when all said and done you just want someone to say when you've stopped and you, you you've got to the end of your career 
I remember a firm that used to be there and they, they really used to have a great, yeah. great culture and a great meaning, yeah. you know, and, and, and just leaving that small legacy about something I think is really important, you know, standing for something, because we can all earn money, can't we? We can all earn money doing anything. Um, it's about, you know, what do you stand for? That's, that's really more important than just earning the money um, and, and having passion. A lovely place to stop. Yeah. It's perfect. So I want to say thank you. It's yeah. been a delight. Thank you. It's been a long time coming. <laughs> Come again. It's been really enjoyable. Yeah. A sales you... pitch for you, but that's yeah. okay. <laughs> that's why we do this. Yeah. That's why we do this. But listen, I really, and you've, you know, on that note, you, you, you have been an ally, a collaborator, a friend, you know, everything. You know, and I, I, I just, my life would be very different if it was. Pleasure to have you, you in our community. Yeah. Thank you. I yeah. appreciate it. So. Uh, thank you. So on that note, uh, so that's a wonderful JOP with uh, Nara Shouder. You can find him on allensthecountants.com. Um, we'll put all the details below this video. A total star. We love him to bits. And um, <laughs> I want to thank Jill for hosting today's um, show. And if you want to find out more about B Collaboration, check out the website www.bcollaboration.com. Check out our next meetings and come along and find out what this is all about. Say goodbye, everyone. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thanks. Bye.